While this job is capable of being done with the engine in the car, it is so much easier with the engine out. Everything is easier to get to. This is a very delicate job and time consuming. Save yourself some trouble and drop the motor before you start. Please see the link provided at the end of this video for additional assistance with dropping your motor. Disassembly. The first step in this whole process is to set the crankshaft at top dead center or TDC and lock it there. Turn the engine until the teardrop shaped holes line up with the hole in the case. Insert the way overpriced factory knob in place or simply use a punch or an appropriate size drill bit. 516 size worked well for me. The camshafts rotate at one half speed of the crankshaft. So the crankshaft is located either at top dead center for cylinder number one or top dead center for cylinder number four. If need be in the next few steps, you might have to rotate it another 360 degrees if it's not at TDC for the cylinder bank you're working on. If you're performing these tasks with the engine in the car, then you will need access to the rear of the engine. You will need to remove the air box to gain this access. Again, see the link provided at the end of this video for assistance with that. Since you will be removing the plugs anyways, go ahead and pull them first. This will make attempting to rotate the engine by hand easier. Now remove the two cam plugs that sit on the end of the two camshafts. You need to remove these green plugs to inspect check the timing when performing the intermediate shaft upgrade. You basically poke a hole in the center of the shaft and pull it out. Toss the old ones away as you will not be reusing them. The engine uses a total of three per head. With the plugs removed, now install the camshaft timing tool, P253, onto the end of the camshafts. You can also use Porsche tool 9624 to hold the camshafts onto the end of the motor. Remove the oil pump from the cylinder head. It's a wise idea to get a marking pen and mark the pump where it lines up with the case. It can be installed backwards by mistake. Remove the four bolts that hold the pump to the case, orange arrows, not the four Allen screws that are internal to the pump. Use two pry bars and simply pull the pump out of the end of the engine. With the oil pump removed, remove all of the perimeter bolts from the camshaft cover. Also remove the two bolts that hold the cover for the Variocam solenoid, green arrow, lower right. With everything disconnected, use a few pry bars on the separation areas of the case and cylinder head, yellow and red arrows, to pry the camshaft cover off the head. When you remove the camshaft cover, you should see the camshafts and the chains underneath. The top camshaft will want to move outwards when you remove the cover, but the force of the camshaft timing tool against its end should keep it relatively secured. It's okay if it pushes out by a few millimeters. You have heard of various sources that the camshaft can snap if there's enough force placed on it from the valve springs, so make sure you don't move significantly out of the bore. The yellow arrow points to the spark plug tubes found on early engines. Now would be a good time to replace them and the O-rings found on 2005 and later 997 cars that seal them to the cylinder head and camshaft cover. Shown here is the solenoid that activates the valve that turns on the hydraulic oil pressure supply that advances the camshafts for the Verocam operation. This solenoid has a habit of failing and needing replacement. Once you have the camshaft covers off, replacement is a snap. Simply unscrew the old one and install the new one in its place. At about $200 a piece, they're probably the world's most expensive solenoids. Now loosen and detach the camshaft sprocket from the exhaust camshaft. Four small bolts hold it onto the camshaft. Carefully remove the leftmost camshaft bearing caps on the camshafts green arrow, insert photo. Then remove the three very long bolts that secure the Vario cam chain tensioner to the cylinder head. 
Now loosen up the chain tensioner on the head. With the chain tensioner loosened, the bearing caps removed and the Vario cam tensioner disconnected from the head, you should be able to slide the gear off the camshaft with your hand. A few gentle taps with a small rubber hammer can also help in case yours is stuck. Be prepared at this point, the camshaft can actually fall out of the motor, so be prepared to catch it. With everything disconnected, remove the camshaft timing tool from the engine, remove the camshafts, and move them over to your workbench. Shown here are the two camshafts, the small timing chain, and the Vario cam tensioner that ties them together. There is a special tool that is used to compress the tensioner together to make it easier to remove, but I just opted to use a zip tie. Works great, and when you're ready to expand it, you just clip the zip tie. With the camshafts removed, you can simply pluck out the lifters or tappets. Check both the lifters and the lifter guides for damage. Pockets of wear greater than one millimeter, fractures at the edges, irregular contact patterns on the running surfaces, grooves in the oil pockets for the cam lobes. Clean each lifter carefully with a lint-free cloth or Kim wipes. With the lifter clean, dip it in some fresh motor oil. Use whatever motor oil you're planning on using when you refill your motor. Press down on the inside of the lifter while it is submerged so that you can clean out the internal passages as best as possible. It's particularly important to clean everything if your engine has had its oil contaminated with coolant. Porsche factory manuals recommend not using a magnet to pluck the lifter from their bores. Use your fingers or a semi-suction cup device instead. This is one of the reasons I don't care for Porsche's recommendation of going 15,000 miles between oil changes. This is an example of a camshaft bearing that is scratched and becoming worn. If this were on a 65 to 89 Porsche 911 engine, I would recommend replacing the bearing. However, the camshaft cover and cylinder heads are matched pieces. To replace this bearing, you basically need to replace the entire cylinder head. It's not worth the risk. Change your oil every three to 5,000 miles. There are three external accessible chain tensioners on the motor. The one shown here tensions the chain for the cylinders and is by far the most difficult to reach. It's located underneath the air conditioning compressor inside the cylinder head and is accessible from inside the engine compartment. In order to loosen this tensioner, you need to remove the two screws that hold the air conditioning compressor and nudge it out of the way. Then use a 32 millimeter socket to loosen the tensioner as shown in the insert photo in the lower right. This photo shows the chain tensioner for cylinders one through to three, which is located inside the bottom of the cylinder head. The three tensioners are all different, but look remarkably similar. Porsche marked the top of each tensioner with different rings in order to help distinguish them. A is the chain tensioner for the cylinders, located under the air conditioning compressor. B, the main intermediate shaft tensioner, which fits inside the crankcase near the flywheel. C, the chain tensioner for cylinders 1 through to 3, which fits into the bottom of the cylinder head. Note the handy markings on the head itself, purple arrow. This photo shows the tensioner for the chain that runs between the crankshaft and the intermediate shaft, which is located on the right side of the engine case very close to the bottom of the flywheel. When replacing the intermediate shaft bearing, loosen the tensioner as shown in the insert photo. If the tensioners are leaking, you should replace the metal sealing rings, yellow and purple arrows. Begin the process of reassembly by taking the two camshafts and lining them up on your bench. The cam to cam chain has two special links that are colored differently, green arrows. Align these links up with the divots that are located on each camshaft as indicated by the yellow arrow. Keeping these two links lined up with the divots will keep the two camshafts timed with respect to each other. Using care not to let the chain slip on the camshaft gears, install the tensioner in between the two sprockets. It's also a good time to replace the chain ramps if they appear worn. Insert photo, lower right, they simply snap off. 
you will have to maneuver the tensioner and the camshafts back and forth to get the tensioner in there. Once installed, clip the zip tie and expand the tensioner. This should secure the chain and the camshafts should be securely timed with respect to each other. Before going on to the next step, you should meticulously clean all of the mating surfaces of both the cylinder head and the camshaft cover, red arrows, insert photo, with gasket remover, making sure to remove all traces of any sealant from both surfaces. With all of the sealant material clean from the cylinder head, lay the camshaft assembly down into the cylinder head. Double check that the light colored chain links and the divots in the camshafts are still lined up properly. On the opposite side of the cylinder head, the lower camshaft should line up with the cylinder head cover parting line as shown in the insert photo. Using your left hand, push the camshaft into place while affixing the camshaft bearing cap into place. Tighten down the bearing caps and also tighten down the tensioner housing. It's very important to keep in mind that E is for intake and A is labeled for exhaust. The cylinder head, the camshaft cover, and these two little caps are all machined together and are labeled with the same number so they won't be mixed up during the assembly process. Since the camshaft cover is machined and matched with the cylinder head, the cover is not available as a separate purchase or orderable part. You must order a complete new cylinder head, which will include the head, the cover, the caps, all matched together. This makes rebuilding and repairing any damage due to camshaft bearing wear very difficult and expensive. With the camshaft caps in place and the tensioner tightened down, affix the camshaft timing tool to the opposite end. There are a set of Porsche tools that are used to hold the camshaft in place while working on the engine at this stage. I found them unnecessary as the camshafts are held in place if you install the timing tool as shown. Remove the chain tensioner for the bank you are working on. Shown here is the tensioner for cylinder bank 1 through to 3, indicated by the green arrow. With the tensioner removed, you should have enough slack to push on the chain sprocket, purple arrow, with your hand. Gently tap the sprocket on the rest of the way using a rubber mallet. Insert photo. If you have the Porsche factory chain tensioner tool, 9599, then install it into the bottom of the case. Tighten the tension screw until the small rod in the center is flush with the adjustment screw. If you do not have this extremely expensive tool, you can tighten up the tensioner on the chain using the regular chain tensioner. Install the tensioner completely into the bottom of the case. With the camshafts installed, the timing tool in place, the two bearing caps tightened down, the camshaft solenoid tensioner tightened down, and the primary tensioner reinstalled in the case, tighten down the four bolts that hold the camshaft sprocket to the camshaft. Double check once again that the special colored links, green arrows, in the cam to cam chain are properly lined up with the divot marks in the camshaft, yellow arrow. Temporarily reinstall the camshaft cover using only a handful of bolts, lightly tighten down and then remove the camshaft timing tool. At this point, spin the engine two full turns to recheck the camshaft timing by reinstalling the timing tool again. The upper right insert photo shows a very expensive Porsche chain tensioning tool in place, but not required. Next, reinstall the oil pump onto the exhaust camshaft using two of the four bolts to affix it to the cylinder head. Carefully line up the tab of the oil pump with the slot on the camshaft and make sure it's inserted correctly. The two scavenge oil pumps are the same for either side, but they must be installed with the proper side facing up. There are markings for cylinder 4 to 6, green arrow, and 1 to 3, yellow arrow. The pump must be installed with the markings for the current cylinder bank closest to the crankcase. Standing behind the 911, Look at the engine and the crankshaft pulley. Cylinders 1 to 3 are on the left and 4 to 6 are on the right. If you get confused, the basic rule is that the two pumps are installed opposite to each other. The oil pump for 1 to 3 is located on the flywheel side of the engine. 
the oil pump for 4 to 6 is located on the drive belt side of the engine. Perform a final cleaning of the surfaces with some isopropyl alcohol and let it evaporate fully before applying the sealant. Porsche recommends using a dry bond silicon type 1209 or Loctite 5900 flange sealant to seal the surface area of the head to the camshaft covers. Don't forget to apply a thin bead of sealant to the bearing saddle areas on the inner part of the head as well. With the sealant applied, tighten down all of the bolts on the camshaft cover in the order shown in this diagram. Carefully tighten each bolt to 10 foot-pounds or 9 newton meters, which is not a lot of force. As a final step, insert the camshaft plugs into the end of the camshafts. Lightly tap them into place with a rubber mallet. Tighten down the two remaining bolts on the oil pump and also the two bolts that secure the cover for the solenoid. With one side of the engine complete, move to the other side and repeat the process if necessary. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.